in a follow-up to last week's video discussing the respiratory responses, so what happens in the lungs, our breathing, respiratory rate, ventilation, all of that, as exercise intensity increases through a lab test and what we're looking at is VO2 max data. This video is all about heart rate response, what's happening in the cardiovascular system and how do we transport that oxygen around the body through the blood. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Hey, welcome back to the channel. Nick here talking science of endurance and everything sports science in general. Thanks for everyone who has been subscribing. If you haven't already and you're enjoying the videos or you're watching for the first time, you get something out of this, please do consider subscribing down below. Very, very close to 2,500 subscribers on the channel here, building a great community around learning the science of endurance and sports science overall. Also, head over to Instagram at NJ underscore sports science in the bottom right, the bottom left for your side. Um, go check that out. Some different pieces of content on there, updates of when videos come out, but then also some other things that I do day to day as a sports scientist. Go check that one out and go give a follow. But also send through your questions over there. Direct message me your questions or topic ideas for future videos. Always keen to hear uh, your thoughts and the types of content that you want to see here on the channel. Moving into today's topic, talking about the cardiovascular response when it comes to um, responses to exercise. What happens as exercise intensity increases to things like heart rate, our stroke volume, our cardiac output overall? How does that impact that whole equation of taking transport utilized in terms of VO2? So if you haven't checked out the respiratory side of things and understanding breathing and how that sort of changes with exercise intensity. I'll link it above and down below in the description. Go check that one out. You can go watch it after this one there. They are linked to an extent, but we are looking at isolated components. So you can always go watch that one after you finish this one. But we'll focus it mainly on what is happening with heart rate. And as exercise intensity goes up, stage on stage, using the example of my VO2 max test from last year, pre well, beginning my preparation and my setting my baseline for bus for half Ironman. Have a look at the data, what was happening, why does it happen? Yeah, let's do it. So I'm going to bring it up on the uh, on the screen here. Should be able to see all the heart rate data uh, from the testing. I'll quickly flip back to our averages tab um, that we had open from. If I scroll back down, had open last time to have a look here. So on the bike, my heart rate uh, at VO2 max got to 183. And a really quick distinction I want to make before we get into the progressions of the graphs, like we saw in the respiratory video is this heart rate here at, at the end of the test there where my VO2 max has occurred, that 59.1 mils per kilo per minute, 183 beats per minute was my VO2 max heart rate. That is different to my maximum heart rate. Now, the main distinction we need to make here is that this, this 183 is happening at my maximal oxygen consumption. So I might take this off the screen for a bit to explain it, but what we're looking at is where did my VO2 max happen and the heart rate associated? How quickly was the heart beating per minute? to give me that oxygen supply um, for those needs. Heart rate max, however, I can, oh, this is obviously on the bike, so my heart rate running wise can get a little bit higher. I can push my heart rate up to 202, 203 beats per minute on the run, no issues. That's more to do with heart rate max, me sprinting, working basically as hard as I can, more anaerobically, because the, the, the body's just gonna follow and try and keep up or supply enough oxygen to meet the demand of the activity. As the intensity goes up, exercise demand goes up, therefore our oxygen demand goes up too. Once we get into those anaerobic intensities past VO2 max intensity like you've seen here, so for me past 183, my heart rate will still continue to rise until a point where it just cannot beat any faster anymore and I likely fatigue and stop. But what what it will what it will sort of do is, is it's just trying to supply as much oxygen to meet the demand, but it never will because the intensity is too high and the rest of the system in terms of how much I can breathe in terms of the air, then also how much I can use of the working muscle can't keep up within that supply and it pumping it around. We end, up, we end up just fatiguing quite quickly. Why? Because we produce a lot of anaerobic energy. So that quick distinction I wanted to make clear, VO2 max heart rate is the heart rate at your maximal oxygen consumption. Maximum heart rate is the heart rate that you can just totally get to. Where, where and how high can you push that heart rate to? Likely that's gonna come through things like an anaerobic effort or even, even in the heat as well is a good one to see that rise. In terms of uh, the heart rate as well, something to consider between bike and run tests, usually, the cycling test elicits a five to seven beat lower heart rate across the board, all intensities, compared to running. Why? More body parts moved in running. Um, we have a little bit less of ventilation in running usually because the diaphragm shortens up through the impact that we're, we're receiving through the ground. So that means we have to compensate somewhere in that system to get the same oxygen consumption. So heart supplies a little bit faster. We're also completely upright, so the blood's got to travel a further distance. It's working against gravity a little bit more. There's a lot going on. Our arms are moving, so there's more blood flow there compared to the bike where they're stationary. 
That's why heart rate is a little bit higher on the run than the bike. So a couple of key things to consider when we are looking at heart rate across two different sports, particularly in, in this circumstance when we're talking triathlon, um, but even if you're moving between sports, a cyclist moving into running, etc. Um, really important to understand that distinction because it's a, it's a key indication for training zones. And I won't cover too much on training zones today, but things like VO2 max versus maximum heart rate, um, bike heart rate versus run versus rowing versus whatever it might be, we're all going to have slight differences there. So we need to understand those differences and those distinctions first, then we can apply that into training, make sure we get the most accurate use of the data as possible. So coming back to the data now, let's have a look at the heart rate graph. So what we can see here pretty pretty sort of, I guess, easy to identify that as exercise intensity increase throughout the test, remembering time on the bottom here, this is our heart rate in beats per minute on the y-axis. So as time went on every three minutes, we increased by 30 watts in this uh, ramp test that we did for this set of data. We have heart rate increasing all the way throughout. So as exercise intensity increases, so too does heart rate, fantastic. That, what is that meaning? Oxygen demand is going up, so we need to increase the supply, and primarily that's gonna happen through the cardiovascular system. We need to pump more blood around the system to be able to get the oxygen to the working muscles as we need it, get blood to flow up to the surface of the skin as well if we're trying to cool ourselves down in hot climates as well. Also, why heart rate will go up because we're trying to do two things at once, get blood to the skin so we can release some of that heat out to the external part of the body as we can, or as easy as we can, but then also transport the oxygen to the working muscle. And this is pretty linear. For most people, this is gonna be a pretty linear trend. What you'll notice here is I'm not a great uh, cyclist or steady state cyclist because cycling in terms of triathlon was definitely my weakest. So you don't see too many steady states. What I mean by that is each stage you might see in a, in a more highly trained cyclist, and we see it quite a lot, or highly trained triathlete who's better on the bike um, than what I'm presenting here, is you'll see heart rate initially come up as we get to the end of the stage, it'll flatten out a bit. Next stage will come up and then it'll flatten out. You can see a little bit of a steady state here where it's kind of trickling up comes up, trickles up, and sort of plateaus at various points. There's a little plateau here, a little plateau there, one there, one here as well, a little one there. All of these are just where the body's getting comfortable at that supply versus demand in terms of oxygen consumption. So it's meeting the oxygen demand with the supply that we're transporting around. What does that mean? It doesn't have to beat any more frequently than what it already is, as long as the intensity stays the same. You see these increase, like this one here, this flattening out, you can see 163, 163, 163 beats, then it goes up, when did that happen? At the 15 minute mark, so the end of a three minute stage, we increased the intensity here and heart rate responded accordingly. So we see this pretty linear trend overall. We sometimes see some steady states, sometimes not, depending on how well trained you are, um, we are gonna see some variation there. Another interesting graph that we get is this one here. Now this is an estimate of our stroke volume. So remember from previous videos, we talked about stroke volume before, being the amount of blood being pumped out of the left ventricle per beat. Multiply that by our heart rate in beats per minute, gives us our total cardiac output. That's a really key determinant for how much oxygen we can then use is how much total oxygen supply we're getting around the body per minute, which is effectively a direct result or byproduct of how much blood can we pump out of the heart per minute, which is that cardiac output. And what we have here is an estimate because we're talking about oxygen consumption per heartbeat. Um, we wouldn't go into the lab and directly measure, some, measure how much blood's coming out of the heart um, per beat because it's quite invasive. You have to insert a catheter into the heart, which we're not gonna do in our performance lab. You need very highly trained surgeons and doctors to be able to administer that. But we get an estimate here looking at your oxygen, oxygen consumption, so VO2 divided by our heart, heart beat. So how, how many mils of oxygen are we getting per beat uh, of the heart? We do the maths, then multiply that by um, beats per minute. It's gonna roughly get us an indication of our cardiac output and what's happening with our stroke volume. It gives us a very rough guide. What we see here is a little bit more of a, a, a gradual trend up but quite often we'll see a rapid early increase. And you can actually kind of see that here. We sort of go from uh, 10, 10 mils per minute per beat, if you like. It's a very complex uh, complex set of units that we're using here. But sort of 10 to, 10 to 15 in the early stages, rises initially and then kind of trails off towards the end. It gets to sort of 20 mils per minute per beat um, in terms of VO2 per, per heartbeat towards the end. Kind of tails off. In a more highly trained athlete, just follow my mouse here if you can, we might see it start I mean, ignore the scaling of the graph, it starts here, rapidly comes up and then just flat lines. And what that indicates is your stroke volume, we can't pump out any more blood per beat. So sometimes we see that in this graph and it indicates it, again, because it's an estimate, it's not a great measure and it's not always gonna show that for everyone. We can kind of see it leveling off and slowing down in terms of its increase here compared to the beginning. But what that is, is the, the heart at a certain point in time when we do testing can only pump out so much blood per beat until we go away, train it to be bigger and stronger and develop it. And I've done a video on how to improve our stroke volume. So I'll put that above in the card and down below in the description as well. But really it's primarily about increasing the size of the left ventricle and then how forceful it can contract through the hypertrophy of the heart as well. 
and they heart's muscle so we can train the strength of it the force it, it can contract the size of it etc compared to like our lungs we can't really change too much but in a certain test or a specific period of time if i was to test today my heart can only pump out so much blood per beat before it's going to max out once it maxes out that's where we see some more dramatic increases in heart rate usually and if i jump back to the heart rate graph you don't see it too much in my data here but at the beginning of the test you can see uh, across the first sort of six minutes we go from about 107 beats per minute at 90, uh, at 90 watts all the way up to sort of 127 beats it's pretty sort of consistent increases each sort of six or so minutes what we might see in a lot of athletes who plateau quite early in terms of maybe smaller heart size we might see heart rate really accelerate towards the end of the test so they'll be ticking along 120 the next stage they go up 125 next stage they go up 130 then all of a sudden we increase by the same amount so 30 watts and their heart rate goes dramatically through the roof it might go up to 180 really really quick pretty clear sign that their heart's plateau, uh, plateaued in terms of how much they can pump out per beat they just have to beat frequently to make it up from there once we get past that point it's all about increasing the supply around the body is all about heart rate just continuing to beat faster and faster and faster um, but really that is our cardiovascular response in a nutshell as exercise intensity increases we need to increase the oxygen supply around the body to meet the demand as long as that demand is going up so as long as exercise intensity is going up our cardiovascular system is going to try to catch up when it does when we're comfortable we hit those steady states so heart rate flattens out stay nice and comfortable you can sit on the same heart rate at that same intensity for a long period of time but as the intensity goes up again we get another rise because we're just trying to make make sure we're keeping up with what the body's trying to do so there's a bit of a breakdown of the cardiovascular particularly the heart rate response to things like exercise intensity as in intensity goes up from a lab test set of data any questions you have about the heart rate response in in a testing situation like that please let me know in the comments down below what have you observed in your own do you hit steady states quite quickly when you do these ramp type tests do you not see any steady states at all be interesting to see uh, the differences in different types of athletes let me know some context behind those um, th behind those uh, that analysis if you like as well if you're hitting lots of steady states are you more of that long distance long steady state type athlete if you're a sprinter you might not be seeing as many steady states so it's a really interesting comparison there as always continue to subscribe to the channel share these videos we've got a great series continuing to grow so i'll put this all in a playlist where we're going to follow uh, all the different components of vo2 max all the lab testing data break it down for you nice and simply cover each little component that i'm looking at to make my decisions when i look at an athlete's test to then go and implement it so we'll be covering more on the physiology side of things how we actually use oxygen fio2 vo2 max we're then going to start working into things like lactate threshold lt1 lt2 vt1 vt2 these will sound like just random terms i'm throwing out at the moment but i will explain them in the appropriate videos in due course so hopefully you enjoyed this one again today that is it for this one and we'll see you in the next one